We'll start this week off with a tunnel shoring example. Shoring is a kind of bracing that's used extensively in mining and other tunnel applications to prevent the soil from collapsing in and covering the tunnel. Oftentimes, shoring is designed in a similar fashion to the one shown in the picture on this slide. In our example, we'll be analyzing a tunnel shoring system with the same basic structure as the picture. Here is our example of the tunnel shoring system. Note that it is deep enough below ground that the pressure gradient over its height is relatively small compared to the average pressure, so we can neglect the gradient component of pressure. Before we move on to the questions, there are a few things that we must do to help us in solving the system. First, we'll establish our coordinate system, so up, right, and counterclockwise will be our positive sign conventions. Next, we must break up the system into its separate members in order to solve for all of the reactions. So we'll have a total of three members to analyze, the header and the two uprights. And I'll draw all the forces and reactions acting on each member. For the header, we have BY, BX, CY, and CX, which comes from the uprights. I'll draw BY and CY acting upwards and BX and CX acting to the left. We also have the 2000 Newton per meter distributed load, which I will change into a concentrated point load called F1. So F1 will be the 2000 Newton per meter distribution times the five meter length of the header, which gives us a concentrated point load of 10 kilonewtons, acting 2.5 meters from either end of the header. Since the reactions at B and C are internal, I'll have to draw them acting in the opposite direction on the uprights. So the upright on the left will have reactions BY and BX, which will act downwards and to the right respectively, since again, they're internal reactions, and I drew them acting in the opposite direction on the header. We will also have AY and AX, and I'll assume that these will act in our positive directions. As for the distributed loads, I'll transform it into a concentrated point load called F2, acting halfway along the four meter height which will be 500 newton per meter times the four meter height, which gives us two kilonewtons. And finally, for the upright on the right, we will have reactions CY and CX, which will act downwards and to the right respectively. Again, they are internal reactions, so they will act opposite to how I drew them on the header. We will also have DY and DX, and I'll assume that these will act in our positive directions. As for the distributed load, I'll transform it into a concentrated point load called F3, which will have the same magnitude as F2 of two kilonewtons, but this time it will act to the left. The first question is asking us what are the vertical loads that the uprights must carry? Here we'll be solving for the upwards forces BY and CY, so we can analyze the header by itself. I'll start by solving for CY first, and then use a force balance in the y direction to solve for by. Taking the sum of moments about b, we get the sum of m about b equals zero, which will be negative 10 kilonewtons, since it will act in the negative clockwise direction, times its normal distance to b of 2.5 meters, plus cy, since it will act in the positive counterclockwise direction, times its normal distance to b of 5 meters. Rearranging the equation for CY, we will get a value of 5 kilonewtons. Now for the sum of forces in the Y direction, the sum of FY equals 0 will equal BY minus 10 kilonewtons from F1 plus CY, which we just found to be 5 kilonewtons. Rearranging for BY, we get a value of 5 kilonewtons. Alternatively, we could have solved for the forces BY and CY using our intuition. We can see that there is the point load F1 acting downwards at the center, and BY and CY are two forces acting at equal distances to F1 on either ends of the header. Since the system is in equilibrium, we know that BY and CY must act upwards and have the same magnitude to support the header. So we can simply divide the 10 kilonewton force in two and get the forces of BY and CY 
which will be 5 kN each. Part B of the question asks, what are the horizontal loads that act on the ends of the uprights? Here we'll just be analyzing the uprights and solving for the reaction AX, BX, CX, and DX. For now, we'll just focus on one of the uprights, so I'll analyze the one on the left. Taking the sum of moments about A, we get the sum of M about A equals zero, which will be negative BX since it will act in the negative clockwise direction, times its normal distance to A of four meters, minus two kilonewtons since it will also act in the negative clockwise direction, times its normal distance to A of two meters. Rearranging for BX, we get negative one kilonewton. Since we got a negative value, that means that our assumption of BX acting to the right was incorrect, so it will actually be acting to the left. Now to solve for AX, we will use the sum of forces in the X direction. So the sum of FX equals zero will equal negative one kilonewton from BX plus two kilonewtons plus AX. Rearranging for AX, we will again get negative one kilonewton, which tells us that our assumption of AX acting to the right was also incorrect. So AX will be acting to the left. Since the system is symmetrical, we don't have to perform calculations again to solve for CX and DX because their magnitude will be identical to AX and BX, but acting in the opposite direction. So we can say that CX and DX are both equal to positive one kilonewton since they will act in our positive X direction. Moving on to part C, what are the horizontal and vertical reactions at the base of the uprights? In terms of the horizontal reactions at the base of the uprights, we already found these to be negative one kilonewton for AX and one kilonewton for DX. As for the vertical reactions at A and D, we will use a force balance in the y direction to solve for AY and DY. To solve for AY, we'll analyze only the upright on the left. So the sum of FY equals zero will be AY minus BY, which we found to be five kilonewtons. So AY will equal five kilonewtons. To solve for DY, we'll analyze only the upright on the right. So the sum of Fy equals zero will be dy minus cy, which we found to be five kilonewtons. So dy will equal five kilonewtons as well. And finally, part D, what is the minimum coefficient of friction for the uprights not to move? We're gonna bring back a little bit of high school physics for this question. If you recall, the coefficient of friction is represented by the symbol mu. The equation that uses mu is the force of friction, which is equal to mu times the force of the normal or the perpendicular force. We can rearrange this for mu and get minimum coefficient of friction equals the force of friction over the force of the normal. Using the reactions at the base of this upright, we get the minimum coefficient of friction equals one kilonewton, the horizontal reaction over five kilonewtons, the vertical reaction. This gives us a minimum coefficient of friction of 0 0.2. To summarize everything in this problem, the first few questions, A to C, were basically asking us to solve for the horizontal and vertical reactions at each connection, A, B, C, and D. Using our equations of equilibrium, we were able to find all these reactions with AY, BY, CY, and DY being five kilonewtons. We also found that AX, BX, CX, and DX shared the same magnitude of one kilonewton, but AX and BX are acting to the left, while CX and DX are acting to the right. And in part D, we found the minimum coefficient of friction by analyzing one of the uprights but it's the same for both because it's symmetrical, and so the minimum coefficient of friction at A and D is 0 0.2.